Do I really have to talk about these games at all? I guess so. Oh, hello, and welcome to the Citanium Mine. Uh, I have just finished recording my best to worst list for 2023. And in that, I mentioned a few games that I had not been able to discuss, so I didn't put them on the list. And I said that I would do a video on that as a little supplemental piece, and that is this video right now. Uh, the uh, not enough to discuss, not enough to rank games that I did try playing this year. And so let, let's just talk a little bit about those. So the first one is actually more of a demo, and it was a Thief Simulator 2 prologue. And all I can really say about it is it gave me the impression that Thief Simulator 2 was just going to be Thief Simulator. I did not care that much about this. Um, I felt like it was very derivative of the first Thief Simulator, and it didn't make me any more interested in playing Thief Simulator 2 in its full release, nor do I have any interest in playing it at all. Why am I going to discuss it? It's, it, it's really a demo, but it's presented as like a short game because it's the prologue thing, so I, I mentioned it here. Call of the Wild, the Angler. I actually think I said this on Telepubble Knockdown, but it was my berry for this year for Save Berry Reboot. Uh, not necessarily because it's bad, or anything like that, but because it's so boring, it's just, there's so little there. I fell asleep playing this game in the first hour, because it doesn't feel like there's any reason for this game to exist. I, I probably could have put it on the list somewhere, but I felt like it wasn't fair. I haven't really played it enough to say, maybe, maybe it gets good at a certain point. So boring. Feels like an add-on that should have come to Hunter Call of the Wild, right? Uh, where you just, you get fishing mechanics now. That would have been good. It doesn't feel like a game that really should exist. Inculinati was a game that came out at the beginning of the year, and it had a very strong, like, medieval art style, like, hand-drawn art style. I think the reason why I don't really know what to say about this is I still, after playing for, like, an hour, don't really understand the mechanics of it. The idea is that you have these different characters that you draw, like, hand-draw into the world, and then they have to, like, push players' characters off of platforms or cause them to die and run out of ink? But I, I still don't even know how that works. Like, it was just confusing more than anything else. I don't know where to rank that. There's no... there Like, in a numbered list, I don't know where... This is kind of confusing, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do goes. Probably low, but I didn't really play it enough to make a determination on that. Cassette Beasts is a kind of game that I've heard is really great, and I would have loved to be able to play it if I didn't practically get softlocked inside the first, like, 15 minutes, where I knew that there was this location that you're supposed to go to on the map. It's marked on your map. Here, here, go here, do the thing. And there was no cue for me to actually do the thing. I wandered around the map that was unlocked, and couldn't, couldn't figure out how to get to the next thing. Maybe I'll come back to it, maybe it's a bug, maybe it will get fixed. I never did. Here we are. Spaceborn 2 is a game that I picked up, it is still in early access. It definitely feels like there's a lot of work that needs to be done on it. I only played for like an hour or two. Um, and it does definitely feel like the indie version of something like a Starfield. I think it could be a very good game into the future. Uh, I also feel like it is not complete and has some definite indie vibes like when you're walking around the city at the beginning, which credit for them to like have an actual city uh, at the beginning with lots of characters infesting it, but not like you interact with all of them. But that like that that very definitive foot footfall sound that they do that you sometimes hear that doesn't feel very dynamic, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Or the ship controls, when you get into the ship controls and you're like, uh, how do I warp from, from point A to point B? It's unfortunate, uh, but it, again, it's an early access. It's a small team. I think it's like one guy is basically the, the main team. I will come back to it at a certain point. I do want to see what they do with it. It's just not something that I felt like I really cared about playing in that moment. Uh, rather than just checking it out and seeing what it was like. Besiege 
is a game where you get to build different siege weapons and then send them into battle and see if you can destroy towers. And it's a neat concept. I just wasn't that into playing it at the time. And so I, I went through several of the levels and I was like, yeah, all right, I get it. What else do I have to play? I think it would probably be fine for people that enjoy that kind of, uh, you know, gameplay. If, if you like the idea of building your machines and sending them out into the world, this works. I, I, th I think it's functional, but I can't really tell you that it's good or bad, honestly. I, I really, I really don't know. Looked cool. Eastern Exorcist. I know I played this game five, ten minutes, and it was like a, it, it was like a side, was it like a side scroll? -y? I don't even remember what the game is. I know I played it. I know I played it. I can't remember anything about it. It's, I think it's a side scrolling game, and you, it's, it's like a combat game, like a hack and slash, beat em up, side scroller beat em up. It's, I think it's a side scroller beat em up. And anyway, pretty sure I played it. I know I played it. I don't remember anything about it. The Wandering Village is the kind of game that I was kind of hoping to get back to and play more of, and I just never got a chance. But uh, it is this game where you create a city on the back of a giant dinosaur. Sounds great. Uh, I didn't play it very long, honestly. I, I played it for a little bit, and it did remind me of some other city builders, but I just never got back to playing it. The neat idea of having this, you know, wandering village, literally, where it's going through the map and it changes, you know, seasons and stuff. Cool stuff. Didn't play it very long and never got back to it which is something I can also say about Sea of Stars. Uh, sea of Stars was an indie darling this year, and on initial impression, I was like, oh, this could go somewhere. Fell asleep after about the first 10, 15 minutes. Have not picked it back up, so that's why it wasn't on my list. I thought it was unfair to, to categorize it, to put it into um, a ranking, because I really haven't played it enough. Cocoon, by the way, is also on this list. Again, played it for a little bit, was like, eh. I mean, neat idea being able to, like, you know, take the spheres of the world and then jump in and out of the world. Like, that's a neat mechanic. But ultimately, for me, I was like, so I just go into a world and then out of a world and then do a puzzle in this world so that I can get to the next world. It's like, all right, neat concept. I don't really feel like it's it it's up to me to judge how good it is honestly because it definitely seems like it's doing neat stuff but I wasn't feeling it at the moment and had no interest in continuing to play it so I didn't Blightland Blacksmith is a game that is going to need a lot of work which I think that they're going to do but the concept's really strong uh, basically, you get to be a blacksmith in the Blightlands, and you uh, you build your weaponry, and you can sell the weaponry, and you go into this dungeon so that you can collect ore and materials so that you can make new weaponry. That's really neat. The thing that really started tripping me up is the difficulty at which you have to put the weaponry together and the interface is not very user friendly so trying to figure out how i'm putting the pommel onto the blade and everything was like a near impossible i couldn't figure it out i feel like it's not right of me to judge the game when i couldn't really even get into the main mechanics of it and i didn't feel like i got into the main mechanics of actually putting together a weapon in its entirety but um, the thing that, that bothered me was that it felt like it was going to be incredibly, uh, tedious putting the actual weaponry together, um, which I think that they're going to work on because they've been doing a lot of patches and hopefully this will, you know, smooth out. I, I think I've seen some things where they, they were talking about helping with the interfacing of, of that aspect so that it's not so obscure. But I really like the concept. I really like the idea. Like a Dragon Ishin 
is uh, a game I was really hoping that I could could get into enough to play this until I remembered, oh right, it's a like a dragon game. I don't have the time for these right now. They're really good. This one and the man who erased his name, which I haven't even tried yet. Like I, I these these are good games, but they are a time sink, and I am not in the mood right now. And I did want to try Ishin, and and uh, like immediately it's like, oh okay, and you're in a you're in this town, and you learn the basic combat mechanics. And I was getting the basic stuff down and the basic tutorials, as many people might know. Yakuza games. <laughs> have have a tendency to have a long period of teaching you how to play the game because there's so many different aspects to it and I just haven't really gotten through that part. You need to really be able to sit down and play it for a long period of time and as the the way this probably will not surprise you, I kind of fell asleep because I was trying to play it at night when I had a moment and I, I just I fell asleep. Wild Hearts is uh, the kind of game I feel is going to appeal and should appeal to people that like Monster Hunter. I am not a Monster Hunter person. I do not particularly like that. I do not like spending 50 minutes or whatever trying to defeat Giant Monster Man. But the idea behind Wild Hearts, which I played on an extended trial, was very interesting in that you get to like build these machines on the fly that allow you to jump and spring and and get up on top of boxes and and uh, help you in the process so it's kind of like you get to bob the bill or your way through this uh in the middle of a battle and and it works really well but again i really can't say that i got into enough of the meat of the game to really make a firm judgment on it nor was i really playing the full game itself. But I think it would have some value for people who enjoy Monsters of Hunters. It definitely wouldn't be for me, though. Spells and Secrets is uh, kind of like a rogue game where you get to cast spells at enemies and go through uh, an interlocking wizarding school. And it's a really interesting idea for a game. And I'll probably go back to it and try it more at some point. Uh, but the problem I think I had with it was mostly that they really need to uh, streamline how you cast the spells. Um, it was uh, not intuitive in how it was mapped to the controls, and uh, the the lock on mechanics along with it made it very difficult to like aim and and work through your spells. It's kind of hard to explain, but. Um, you know when a game feels good in your hands and when it doesn't, and this didn't. So I think it has some characteristics that are worth exploring, but I wasn't really into it at the time. Tectonica is, uh, I guess, sort of like satisfactory, but you're working underground, and it's a neat idea. Um, I don't know if it's going to be as good as something like Satisfactory, uh, and it definitely has some like Minecrafty kind of elements to it too, uh, where you're like picking apart the world itself. It looks kind of cool. The graphic design of it is a little bit of a throwback. Um, but again, I didn't really feel like I played it much past like that first cavern that you're in, where you're trying to set up, you know, your mining operations and everything. And it doesn't doesn't feel like I can really judge it to any degree. But I did try it. I did try it. A lot of these games would have probably fallen into the the middle of my list if I were to rank them, and uh, there are a few in there, some of the indie darlings, that were I able to actually sit down and play them for any length of time would have probably been ranked very high, but the fact of the matter is, is that I just didn't play enough of them to really come to a firm judgment on them. Uh, that in any meaningful way. Uh, most of the games that are on my best to worst list are ones that I have either played to finish or I've played to the point where I no longer have any interest in playing them. <laughs> and that's the point.
All right, thank you for joining me on this one. And we're going to do a smaller episode after this, another little supplement, talking about some student projects that I played this year. Some of them that I was going to originally rank, and then I was like, nah, I don't want to do that because it feels like the they 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 don't they don't need to be judged. They're they're student projects. They're learning. They're they're doing some stuff. So, and now that I'm done discussing things that I didn't have enough to discuss. I can discuss when you are going to be leaving me. But don't forget your gift bag. I don't actually know if I have gift bags. I need a swag bag for people who visit. Okay. You're... Just gone. Seems to be a running theme 